Video Game Nerd. Capcom is a name that needs no introduction. In the 80s and 90s, Capcom was one of the most dominant companies in the arcade and home console market. You'd be hard pressed to go somewhere in public and not see a Capcom machine or one of their games at somebody's house. In 1993, Capcom began development on a new game with a focus on horror. Originally conceived as a remake of the 1989 horror RPG Sweet Home for the Famicom, Capcom put Tokuro Fujiwara, the game's original director, in charge of the project. Fujiwara made his name in Capcom as the producer and sometimes director of a ton of great games such as Ghosts and Goblins, Bionic Commando, DuckTales, and Chip and Dale on the NES. Hell, he even produced almost every Mega Man game on the NES and SNES. Best of all though, he produced the classic Street Fighter 2010. Hot damn. To direct the project, Fujiwara chose Shinji Mikami, the designer of Disney's Aladdin and Goof Troop on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, no joke. Who would have thought that the designer of Goof Troop would go on to create one of the most iconic horror series ever made? In 96, Resident Evil came out. The game revolutionized the horror gaming genre, even going as far as coining the term survival horror. The series is still going strong today, spawning a ton of sequels, as well as a movie that also spawned a ton of sequels. But today, I want to focus mainly on the PlayStation 1 era of Resident Evil. The games focus less on all-out combat and more on conserving your items. This adds a lot of tension because if you run out of ammo, you're <laughs> This is where the survival part of the genre comes in. It's about escaping rather than fighting. The controls take a lot of time getting used to. I've referred to them in the past as tank controls because pushing up makes you move forward no matter what direction you're facing. Pair this with the camera angles and it's real disorienting. I hated the tank controls, but looking back on it, it did nothing to hurt Resident Evil's legacy. One thing I find funny is at the end of every game, you trigger a self-destruct timer. It's like they couldn't come up with any more ideas how to end the games, so they just rehashed the ending of the first one. After making the first three games for the PlayStation, Capcom set its eyes on the new systems that were on the horizon. From here on out, Resident Evil was going next-gen. Except for one last game on the PlayStation, Resident Evil Survivor. The game came out in 2000. By then, a real Resident Evil sequel called Code Veronica had already hit the Dreamcast. Not to mention, the PlayStation 2 was only a few months away. So basically, this game is kicking the PlayStation while it's already down. Mainly in the b This game is... You hear that? Hey, who are you guys? Then why are you in my yard? Hello? 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 Hey! Come here! Wow, what an a Jill, run for that house! Yeah, that, I'm going home. You see that? Well, I guess I gotta explain. The Umbrella Corporation, they moved in next door, set up a secret lab, and now there's monsters and stuff, and I don't know what to do. Well, I guess I'll pop in the disc, play some Resident Evil Survivor, have a pint, and wait for all this to blow over. How's that for a slice of fried So here we are, Resident Evil Survivor, the turd of the series. The unplanned turd when Capcom their PlayStation pants beyond any hope of cleaning. So bad they had to throw it away. The game starts with a wall of text that takes forever to scroll, even if the narrator doesn't have the patience to wait for it. He reads most of it before it even hits the screen. To wipe out the entire city. 
However, this was not the only location where an outbreak occurred. Then the cutscene starts, and man is it ugly. Just look at the intros for Resident Evil 2. At the time, these looked great, and this came out two years before. So this guy's seen hanging from a helicopter, falls off, and the copter crashes. Then that same helicopter s another guy out. Seriously, look at this. The helicopter's on fire, and this dude just shoots out like a turd with an explosive fart behind it. And there's your main character, Helicopter Diarrhea. What a lame character. He looks generic, and his clothes are that particular shade of mold-covered green. Man, how many times can I talk about before I even played the damn game? So the game starts, and it's in first person, which seems like it would be awesome. Yeah, a first-person Resident Evil game sounds like a great idea on paper. Too bad it's on toilet paper. You know, I've probably talked about more times than I've actually But it's a fact that when they wrote down the idea for this game, they wrote it on toilet paper. Toilet paper that was already used. All right, let's get on with this. The main problem is they kept the controls of the other games. Also, to fight, you have to hold down R1 and move a cursor on your target. The game was originally made as a light gun shooter with gun con support, but that might have made the game somewhat decent, and that's obviously not what they were going for here. You run into an alley and fight the first zombie, and it's awful. You shoot him four times, he falls awkwardly, and you a key out. Seriously, look at it. It comes out of his You know, I'm starting to notice a trend here. The zombie s out a key, the helicopter s out the main character, and Capcom s out this game. After you pick up the key, you choose between three doors. Each one brings you to a different location. This place is some kind of movie theater. Here you come to your first puzzle, if you even call it that. In the older games, you had to solve puzzles to find certain items and open new paths. Some were easy, like pushing blocks to make a bridge, but others you'd have to use a little more thought, like pushing buttons in the correct order to find an item. Resident Evil Survivor, however, just has you find an item in the same room and use it. Here you find some film and put it in the projector. Afterwards, you run back to the theater and there's a key for no reason. So you get the key and leave the theater. Then you encounter some zombie dogs and a ringing phone. The phone hang up? How about the game turn off? At this point, the game starts throwing a variety of enemies at you, but you always face one type at a time. There's a mix of monsters from the first three games, like these jumping lizard guys called hunters, giant spiders, birds, and lickers. Yeah, that's their name because they have a giant tongue they lick you with. Real clever. Sometimes you run into this big At first I thought he was the boss, but he's so easy and he shows up a lot. At one point you're walking in this dark cave or something, and there's like 10 of them. They give you ammo when you kill them by it out, of course. The same guy shows up in Resident Evil 2, but there, he's scary. He stalks you all throughout the second scenario. He even transforms in the end and becomes the final boss. But here, he just walks around like he's lost and lets you shoot him. Seriously, I kill every one of these guys and barely ever take a hit. So anyway, I head into this library and there's this tiny bald guy who calls you Vincent. He tells you that this is all your fault and then he runs away. I sense a twist. It turns out that the little guy is the janitor of the sewer and he actually lives down there. You find this out by reading his diary that's just left on a desk. Dear Diarrhea, I'm the biggest loser in the whole world! Through reading it, you also discover the main character is the evil Vincent, a high-ranking member of the Umbrella Corporation and the man responsible for the outbreak. What a twist! I am Vincent! It was all my fault! Then a kid walks in and dances like he has ghost peppers concealed in his... <sighs> you know where. The character animation in this game is laughable. They all look like they're doing the robot. Even the zombies are animated like <laughs> When you kill them, they fall like a sack of bricks. Wow. Either there's some frames missing, or a gravity rift opens and thrusts them to the floor at the speed of light. It's hard to believe, but the voice acting is the worst of any Resident Evil. I know people joke about the first one. What is this? Wow. What a mansion. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Everything was plotted from the start by Umbrella.
but listen to this. Hello, can you hear me? Who are you? Wh what are you doing? Answer me! Umbrella. So this is where the city is controlled from. There's a prison area with a bunch of naked zombies everywhere. Of course you find a bunch more diary diarrhea. This one's from a prisoner that says he was abducted by the men in black. Oh, does that mean Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones work for Umbrella too? After the prison, you go into this office building and get to see probably the funniest cutscene in any game ever. It starts off with a voice message from Vincent's mom. Vincent? It's me, your mother. My mother? Vincent, please, listen to your mother. I want you to leave Umbrella. I want you to stop performing those terrible crimes and just come back home. That's in the finished game. Next, you get the worst run cycle ever. Look at that. The kid runs full force and only goes like three feet. Was this really the best they could have done? So you chase these little through a river or something, and you run into these weird vibrating giant spiders. I think they glitch, but I played through this part a couple times, and it always happens. The game I have is in near perfect condition, so my only conclusion is they're meant to just vibrate. After that, you get to the kid's house. There's some items here, including herbs. I forgot to mention that herbs are the method of healing in the Resident Evil series. The programmers of this game should have smoked less herbs. You can combine herbs together if you have an hour of free time. Just look at this. I picked up a red herb and I want to combine it with a green herb to make a full heal. I select the green herb and then have to find the red herb. The scrolling takes forever. In the older games, it was like two seconds. Also, I feel the Resident Evil way of using items was always weird. First, you find an item and check it, and then it asks if you want the item. Well, considering I went to pick it up, I'd say I want it. Imagine if that's how it worked in real life. Where the f did my beard go? <laughs> when you get to the kid's house, you find the girl hiding in a room. It turns out the boy went to the umbrella factory, so you have to go find him. How he made it there is beyond me, because there's all kinds of hunters, dogs, and those big trench coat <laughs> The umbrella factory has some of the worst music I've ever heard. And Resident Evil's known for having great music. It's creepy and unsettling. But this sounds like somebody bought a $2 Casio at the Goodwill and threw it down the stairs. How are they okay with this? Was there any quality assurance? So, after running through a ton more monsters, you find the kid. He's being attacked by a hunter monster, so you shoot it. And now the kid loves you. Please forgive me. What are you talking about? It's not your fault. Vincent is the one who caused everything. Well, I mean, I... You? What do you mean? You're the detective. Your name is Ark Thompson. What? So, it turns out you aren't Vincent. You're some d**khead named Ark Thompson, and you were acting as a spy to expose the Umbrella Corporation. The guy dressed in white, who fell from the helicopter, is actually Vincent. What a twist. This is where the game's writers make the lousiest attempt possible to connect this game to the Resident Evil canon. That's right! At the request of my friend, Leon S. Kennedy, I came here to investigate. Oh, yes! I remember! I remember everything! That's right, Leon from Resident Evil 2 is this friend. Leon was probably sending Ark there to die. Also, I find it weird he calls Leon by his full name. Who the f does that? And this is internal monologue. He isn't talking to anyone. So you send the kid, by himself, back to find the girl. And they're supposed to meet you at the evacuation route later. Oh, and cue that self-destruct timer. Now, I've only been playing about an hour, and I'm at the end of the game already. Compared to the other Resident Evil games, this one is easy as f This is my first time playing through, and I'm about to beat it. 
Sure, I've died a couple times, but this game has continues instead of ink ribbons like in the other games. I guess that's one good thing about it. The only good thing. Anyway, the last area is the same as the rest. Find an item, open a door, and run through. This time, however, the weird sewer janitor comes to kill you because he still thinks you're Vincent. Too bad he gets killed by this naked claw guy. I know he's called the tyrant, but I like naked claw guy better. Like every other thing in this game, he's easy. He runs around swiping at the air until he dies. Or does he? On to the next room where the two kids are somehow already at the evacuation train waving. So let me get this straight. This kid has time to run all the way back to the house, get his sister, run all the way to the factory, and find the train all before you do. And plus, there's monsters all over. Either these kids are really badass or Ark Thompson is a huge I'll let you decide, because I already have. To move the train, you have to run and hit a switch that's right next to it. This game just keeps going halfway with its puzzles. Why even have them? This is yet another fetch quest on the large dung heap of other fetch quests throughout the game. So you run to one end of the room, then run to the door and get to a helipad. But watch out, the naked claw guy from before is crouched on a rooftop like Batman just waiting for you. He jumps down and the final boss fight begins. All he does is run around with his mouth open and swings at you. It's terrifying. Oh, sorry, I meant embarrassing. As long as you keep walking backwards and shooting, he can't hit you. What a joke! Shoot him enough times and his shoulder eyeball grows or something, and then he gets bigger. So now it's the final, final battle, which isn't much different from the first final battle. You run around, shoot him, he dies, or does he? You get on the helicopter, everything seems good, and you fly away. The end. Or is it? No, the monster somehow gets to your helicopter after you fly a thousand feet up and the entire f***ing island explodes. It makes no sense, but what happens next makes even less sense. So you shoot him with a missile and then shoot a missile into the other missile and now he's dead. The helicopter does the most awkward flyby and the game ends. Or does it? No, it does, for real this time. There's the credits. Oh, and to answer my question from earlier, according to the credits, there was no quality assurance. No game testers at all. And that means no one checked this game before it came out. What a surprise. After beating it, you have the option to save the guns you found during your playthrough for another run. There are different story segments depending on the route you take, but I give two less than I did before. All it changes is who gets killed by the naked claw guy. So, I guess it's an attempt at adding replay value. <laughs> replay value. But is it replay value if you never want to replay it ever again? So if you have an hour and a half to spare and don't value your time on Earth at all, then you can run through it a second time. But me, I'd rather huff the <laughs> exhaust from an elephant. <sighs> Repeat, the self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed oh, no. to the emergency call. Oh, those must have triggered my neighbor's self-destruct system. I, I gotta get out of here before everything explodes! Five minutes until detonation. Hey, nerd! Take this! Yes, I wanna take it! Lights out!
good. You made it out too. Well, thanks for destroying my house. You. Chris Redfield. Jill Valentine. Barry Burton. Rebecca Chambers. Albert Wesker. Nerd. The Angry Video Game Nerd.